Hello boys and girls, welcome to the second day of our exciting program that helps us to become closer to our personal friend and savior. And we say his name is Jesus. It is Jesus who helps us to walk by faith and not by sight. And I hope you are enjoying every bit of this program. And remember, you need to make sure that you invite and tell your friends to come and learn more and more about Jesus. And this Jesus is not just a Jesus who lives us because he is our best friend. Not only that, he is our shepherd. We become the sheep of his pasture. He makes sure that he keeps us lying on green pastures where goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. I am getting excited because this program is leaving me closer to the feet of the cross. Well, before we get into uh, the program of the day, we want to begin with an exercise. Yesterday, I see some are getting to get to into the exercise. You are doing so well and I am so excited because most of you have been born ready for something like this. I've reminded you we do this exercise to show that we can be fit for witness. We want all of you to be strong to go and tell the world that Jesus says and he says to the animals. Of course, when you walk by faith and not by sight, you need to be strong and big. After all, we serve a mighty God who is so big, so strong, and so mighty. Are you guys ready for the exercise? Okay, that's fine. I see some are still lying on the floor. Some are seated on the couch. Some on the bed. So we're getting, oh, okay. Now most of you are almost ready for the exercise. Side. For those who are joining us for the first time, our activity says, do as I say, not as I do. Why are we doing this activity? We are saying as pathfinders and adventurers, we must say exactly what we do because we become ambassadors of our words. When we tell people to love one another, we must then be able to love one another and not hate others. So the best thing to do is to do what you say. That's why in, in short, they say, preach preach what you live and live what you preach. In other words, that's what we are trying to tell you and you can only do this if you live by faith. In case you are joining us for the first time, when I say head, you put your hands on your head. When I say hands, you flicker your fingers. When I say waist, you put your hands on your waist. Are you guys ready? Okay. I had almost forgotten. All of you are born ready and you're excited for this. So today, I'm not even going to start very slow. I now know you already have the gist, but maybe for the sake of those who are joining us, let's see if we could try one last time before we do it uh, the way that we normally know how to do best. Let's go head, heads, west, heads, head, heads, west. Okay, now you know this is exactly what you're supposed to do. Now we're going to go straight into the activity. Make sure you are the, your own brother's keeper, your sister's keeper, your friend's keeper, and make sure they're doing it so right. Are you guys ready? Okay, let's go. Head, heads, west, hands, head, west. Okay, someone got it wrong, but I'm still going. Okay, let's go. Head. Ah! <laughs> Remember, I say do as I say, not as I do. Okay, let's do it one last time before we hear a beautiful song that we hope to keep in our hearts as we prepare for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, are you ready? Let's go. Head, hands, west, heads, head, 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 west, head, head. Ah, yeah, there you got it. There you got it. Okay, that's fine. Before we get into our uh, faith facts, where we do a five uh, five question quiz on the faith stories in the Bible and in five seconds you must have written your answer. When I shout the answer, make sure the answer that is on your paper is the exact one that you have on your page. But before we do that, sit back, relax and enjoy the music that is coming to you and of course sing it to the best of your ability because Jesus loves you.
back, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed every word of that song. And I hope you are singing the loudest because God has loved you the greatest. I mean, remember the book of uh, John chapter 3 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us the very best. So we have every reason to be able to sing and show the world that Jesus loves to the uttermost. Well, boys and girls, we are back for our uh, faith fact. This is a segment where we ask you uh, faith uh, questions. Uh, these are faith stories in the Bible. So in five minutes, uh, not five minutes, but I'm going to give you five questions that you're going to be answer in five seconds and we'll tell you the answer what it is. Are you guys ready? If you are ready for the uh, faith fact, I know you are definitely ready and you are going to get all five of them correct. If you get five, remember it's a kudos, thumbs up for those who get four or three. And today I'm sure most of us will get more than three. Of course, if you probably get a little less than that, I'm challenging you. Go and read your Bible. And remember, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So get ready for faith fact. Welcome back to Faith Facts, where we talk, uh, ask questions about faith issues in the Bible. And of course, we do have five questions, and on each question in five seconds, you must be able to give us your answer. I hope your pen is ready, your paper is ready. You can also write on your tablet wherever you can get the answer. I know you got five yesterday, but just in case you didn't get five yesterday, today is your opportunity to get the five. Now, the first one is very easy. We're going to start with spellings. May you spell the word faith. Well, this one I don't have any, any clues because you just have to know how to spell faith. Your time is up. Your five seconds is up. Now let's do it together. F-A-I-T-H. That's faith for you. Yes, question number two. Question number two. Uh, we are still on faith facts. The question is, who parted the Red Sea? I'll give you a clue. He used a rod and I think the sister was called Miriam. And your time is up. If the answer you got is Moses, then you got it right. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. Question number three. By faith, David killed a big giant. And what was his name? Yes, all I can give you a clue is he had six figures on one hand and he was so huge and your time is up. Yes, if you wrote Goliath, then you got the faith fact number three correct. Number four, but in which chapter uh, uh, of the book of Hebrews do we find a story where we hear about a lot of people who did big things in faith? Which chapter in the book of Hebrews? Yes, I can give you, uh, should I give you a clue? Well, the number is a two-digit number. Yes, and your time stops right away. If your answer is chapter 11, then you got it right. Chapter 11, that's where we find the book that talks a lot about those who did so much. Some people actually call it the hero's echo of faith. Well, the last question, question number five, by faith, it was Queen Dash who was able to walk into the presence of the king. Well, I can give you a clue. He said, uh, if I should die, I should die. Or if I perish, I perish. And your time stops now. The answer we want is Queen Esther. Uh, the other name is Hadassah, but Esther would do. So if you got that one, uh, that's fine. I hope you got five today. If not, make sure tomorrow you catch us also for our faith fact. And don't forget, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I know tomorrow you'll be able to do so much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we get into the word of the day. God bless you. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this section of faith facts as we find facts in the Bible about the faith stories. And I hope it will move you to walk by faith and not by sight. So today we are back in the Bible and we are learning about faith stories in the Bible. So we learned about Abraham. Today we're going to talk about Moses. Moses, we find the story in the book of Exodus. We've moved from the book of Genesis, of course, from Exodus chapter uh, 3 right towards the end. But I think we'll, our story will end in Exodus chapter 4. So we're going to retell the story uh, so that we'll be able to be motivated and inspired to walk by faith and not by sight. And remember, faith, faith believes the unbelievable. It sees the invisible. By faith, rivers are crossable. By faith, 
Mountains are, cl are climbable. There is so much we can do if we live by faith. So let's learn from the story of Moses. What is it about the story of Moses? You remember Moses was born at a time when the children who were boys and of the Israelite nation were being killed. It was a pandemic of their own in that time. Of course, not COVID-19, but it was just a hatred that was happening. But you know what? Uh, Moses' mother had so much faith. That's, her name is Jacobet, uh, and the father Amram, and the sister uh, who uh, is called Miriam, and the brother is called Aaron. In this story, we find faith across the family. I am hope and pray that your family is such a faithful family that you trust in God more than anything else. Because they believed in God, they were able to save baby Moses. And it was Miriam, the, the sister, who took baby Moses, put him in a basket, you remember the story, and he made sure that he put, the, put him in the river, and he just followed it until Moses was taken by a Pharaoh's daughter. And eventually, Moses went and stayed in Pharaoh's home. But I want you to see something so interesting about the life of Moses. Now we're going to see it when Moses was now a, an old person, not as, as little as you are today, but you can still learn a lot of faith stories from the story of Moses. When Moses was old, now you could see how the children of Israel were being troubled by Pharaoh, who at this time was almost like his uh, grandfather. And guess what? What was happening? Now Moses could not contain the pain that he saw with the children of Israel. And he chose to go and suffer with the children of Israel than to enjoy the pleasures of Egypt. Guys, you did not even hear what I said. I'm saying, if in the house of Pharaoh, they used to have ice cream, they used to have the delicacies of all that, Moses said, well, I would rather go and make bricks with without mortar. I mean, I mean, that's how Moses had so much faith in God that he left the goodies of Egypt to go and suffer with the children of God. That's one thing that I like about the story of Moses. But I want to fast forward to a time when Moses then ran away from Egypt. Remember, after he saw uh, two um, Israelite uh, brothers fighting, and says, how can you fight amongst yourself? How can God take care of you if you fight amongst yourself? So let me challenge you boys and girls under the dictates of my voice. You must be able to take care of your brothers and sisters, take care of your friends, whether in the school, at com in the community, at home, or in the entire globe. We must learn to love one another. In fact, we show our faith in God when we take care of each other. But that's not what we are talking about. And one day, Moses, as he was, you know, shepherding uh, the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, he saw a burning bush, but it was not being consumed. Oh, man, what a beautiful story. And God says, I want to send you back to Egypt, to the land of bondage, where you left Pharaoh. I know Pharaoh is looking for you, but I shall be with you. And you know what Moses said? Moses, but God, is, you know, I, I, I'm not strong in speech. And God says, I will send Aaron with you. He will be your mouthpiece. But what I like about Moses he knew what was awaiting him in Egypt, but he knew that there was something bigger than all the problems in Egypt, and it is God himself. So he says, I have no fear and no worry. As long as God says, I must go, I will go. And he says, when I get to Pharaoh, who should I say has sent me? And the Lord says, go and say, the great I am has sent me. Wow. And Moses went back uh, to Egypt, and he went to go and deliver the children of Israel. He did not go with guns. He did not go with assegais. And he says, I don't have anything. And God says, I am going to use whatever you have. What is it that is in your hand? When you looked into his hand, he only had a road. And God said, I will use that road. Let me talk to you boys and God. When you live by faith and not by sight, God uses what you have. There's a song that says, little is much when God is in it. We must trust, learn to trust in God because God will works with even the things that we don't think God will be able to use, that God is able to use. And he says, I just have a road. And God says, I am going to use the road to do greater things. God can even use you to do greater things. You only need to believe and trust in God. Walk by faith and not by sight. So he decided to go. He went with Aaron. You remember the story. And he went and he told Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. Ooh, 
Oh, I love this part. Let me just remind you, God wants to see his children free and free indeed. When we trust in God, we get the freedom that we need. But Pharaoh, you know, he didn't want the children of Israel to go because that was cheap labor. They were helping to do uh, so many develop, uh, developments in Egypt. So whenever Moses wanted to go, Pharaoh would just reject. And you remember the story of the 10 plagues as God wanted the children of Israel to go out and Pharaoh would always find a reason for them not to go until the firstborn children died and eventually Pharaoh was able to let Moses and the children of Israel go. And when they went, they didn't go empty-handed. They took off the treasuries of Egypt. Let me tell you, boys and girls, sometimes we are faced with difficult situations, but when God remembers us, when our faith has been put in action, God opens doors which no man will be able to close. He will even give us the things that we did not get during our time. So they were given back pay, if I would look at it, and they traveled, they were now going to the land of Canaan, the land that flows with milk, and honey, as they were going, they met a lot of challenges. But I want you to figure this. For 40 years, they were in the wilderness. But one thing I like about God, they never went to shops to go and buy new shoes, new clothes. By faith, by faith, for the 40 years they were there, their clothes never got torn. You know, the, uh, if they were wearing sandals, they would always fit, whether the sandals were growing Oh, I love this God. When you have faith in God, God will show you greater things that you have never imagined in your life. But now this is the most interesting part of this faith story. Now, as they had moved, now they were going to uh, pass a place that is called the Red Sea. You remember the Red Sea? You find the story in Exodus chapter 14. And then people were so afraid. And this is what Moses said to the children of Israel. Do not be afraid. The Lord will fight for you. Let me talk to you boys and girls. I don't know what you're going through at this moment, not only because of COVID-19, but so many things are happening in our lives. I want to give you a promise. The Lord will fight for you. So make sure you surrender all your battles and trust in the Lord. He will definitely fight for you. Back to the story. Now they are there right at the Red Sea. If you read your Bible, there were two mountains. They couldn't go anywhere. Now Pharaoh, when he knew that the children of Israel were in that place where they were now confined, he took all his soldiers. He took all his chariots. He took all the uh, horses, and he wanted to go and kill Moses. When the children of Israel saw Pharaoh coming with all his chariots, they were shivering and they were in so much fear. And they said to Moses, Moses, why did you bring us to die here in the wilderness? I think there were graves in Egypt. We could have died and been buried in Egypt. But Moses gave them assurance. Moses did not know what God was going to do. But you know what he said? He said, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But what I like is he said, now the Egyptians you're going to see today, you will see them no more forever. Egyptians were representing the problems that the children of Israel were facing. Boys and girls, whatever problem you have today, the Lord is telling you, stand still, fear not, and see his salvation. The problems you have today, you will see them no more forever again. And remember, Moses still had a rod in his hand. I want to challenge you, boys and girls. Your solution to many of the problems does not lie with any people around you, but it lies to what you have in your hand. Your faith is good enough to make sure that your problems disappear. And you remember the story. As the Egyptians were coming, Moses took the road, pointed at the Red Sea, and the Bible says the waters parted and the dry became, the ground became dry. So they walked on dry ground and right through the waters, mm, I could only imagine what a scenario, what an incident. Probably they could see all the aquarium life, the goldfish, whatever it is, the, uh, the eel, whatever it is that was in the aquatic life. They could see it because of the faith of Moses. And they moved right past and until they got to the other side of the Red Sea. But when Pharaoh and his armies thought they could do the same, but because they were moving by sight, not by faith, and Moses pointed at the Red Sea, and a strong wind came, and it closed them there. Now, what I like about this story, this is something that had never happened in the history of humanity, but Moses still believed God, that he said, when I said I will take you to Canaan, I will surely do so. So it is upon you and I to be obedient to God, and God will be able to do greater things for us. So the story of Moses is another faith story that helps us to see that when we walk by sight, God opens 
places that are closed. And God is the one who can take care of us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we have nothing to fear because we have a God who understands, who knows that by faith we are able to do so many things. And eventually they pass through. So that was yet another faith story that helped us to see that there are so many things in our lives that have put us in a place that is closed. But when we believe in God, when we put our faith in action, when we live according to the dictates of God, God who open way where there is no way. I don't know what is in the head or along your way, but trust in God and believe in you. And God does not need to use extraordinary things. I don't know what you have in your hand. I hope it is faith. When you put your faith in action, God is able to do great and mighty things. May God bless you, boys and girls, as you continue to live for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the story of Moses help you to navigate your way and to open a situation that was almost closed. Our hands together, our eyes are closed, our heads are bowed, shall we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you this day for the great faith stories that we have. We want to thank you for our fathers who have gone before us, people like Moses who never used to walk on by sight but by faith, who believed that you would open a uh, way where there is no way. Can you do that for us even in these times? Bless us as little boys and little girls to be able to do so much even in this life that we have. Thank you once again for giving us yet another inspiration through Bible stories. Bless us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us for this program as we continue to learn how we can put our faith in action. Let's meet again in the afternoon and learn more about how we can move by faith and not by sight. God bless you.